This is a pretty good hardware news recap for the last week. NVIDIA's got a new GTX 1060 sort of TI coming out. It's actually the fourth iteration of a 1060. Might be missing one in there. There have been a lot, and there's another one now. And not to be outdone, AMD is re 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 refreshing its Polaris line to, I guess, compete with NVIDIA's need to re 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 refresh its Pascal line. Memory prices are expected to fall even further, so that's good news for everyone. And then uh, Z390, of course, has arrived, so we have some information on that. Silicon Lottery has released its bidding st statistics, and Backblaze has more hard drive failure rate analysis. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 and Dark Rock Pro 4 CPU coolers. These high-end coolers focus on a smarter approach to air cooling by adding a mini fin stack on top of the direct contact cold plate, adding small bumps to the fins for increased service area, and by using Silent Wayne's 135mm fans custom built for high performance cooling without too much noise. The Pro is a dual tower cooler rated for 250W TDP, while the Dark Rock 4 is built for 200W TDPs. Learn more at the link in the description below. So first up, quick GN news item. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up our new limited edition graph foil shirt. So the last limited edition foil shirt we did sold out within a couple of weeks. We expect this one probably will too. We have the pre-sales up so we can figure out the distribution of sizes everyone wants. And then once they're sold through, that's it. We might have a couple left over like last time that we can open up later. But if you want one, grab it on store.gamersnexus.net earlier because they are limited and we're not going to make any more once they're sold. So first major news item here, memory prices are expected to fall even further. Analysts at TrendForce continue to aggressively adjust their expectations for memory pricing downward, which is really good news that we haven't heard in a while, especially for the last quarter of this year and into early 2019. TrendForce is typically accurate in its price calculations, so this is a good place to look for some real analysis of the potential DRAM and SSD pricing going forward. DRAM prices could lower as much as 20% year over year in 2019 due to weak prices and a growing oversupply problem, at least for the manufacturers of that memory. Also affecting this is the slow smartphone shipments and sluggish notebook shipments, the latter of which is largely a result of Intel's problems keeping up with 14 nanometer supply and the the demand, obviously, because they have a 14 nanometer shortage and haven't been able to move to 10 in any meaningful fashion. So these things all contribute to falling prices of memory, which is great for all of us. This would effectively kill the lucrative growth cycle that's been going on for nine consecutive quarters in the memory world. NAND is also expected to see a 25 to 30 percent price reduction coming up, likely in 2019. And that's mostly resulting from increased production capacity from manufacturers, along with, again, changes in the demand of that supply. If you haven't looked recently, take a look at some of our SSD sale links. We'll post in the description below. Because SSDs are really affordable right now. If you felt bad about RAM, you can at least feel good about the SSDs. So we just bought five of the uh, Samsung 860 Evos, 250 gigabytes, for $55, just to give you an idea of where prices have fallen lately, which is huge. That's a big reduction. And uh, we picked up a couple one terabyte SSDs at 150 bucks, just to use as game drives. So it's looking good. We'll, again, we'll link those below. But it seems like there's finally some price relief in all areas of the memory segment for the enthusiast buyer. Next up, NVIDIA recently published official specifications. This is not a rumor. This happened. NVIDIA published real specifications for a new GTX 1060, and it's not a joke either. This indicates a move to GDDR5X for the now fourth SKU of the GTX 1060 card. The GTX 1060 six gigabyte card now comes in two modern versions, but it's had three since it came out. There's the eight gigabit per second GDDR5 option. That's pretty much what you get today if you buy a six gigabyte GTX 1060. There's the three gigabyte option that's a bit cheaper and half the memory and 10% fewer SMs, by which I mean I think it's one fewer SM. And now there's the GDDR5X version. And previously, if you had forgotten, there was also a GTX 1060 nine gigabit per second GDDR5 option, which the differences really amounted to basically margin of error in testing from eight to nine gigabit per second memory. So kind of curious to see how much 5X actually matters here. But we also don't know if the die has changed yet. 
we have to open it up and see. We don't know if it's GP 104, 106, what it is, but we'll see. So the FPU count will remain the same, or if you prefer the CUDA cores, cores. FPU count is the same. Frequency is the same, at least spec, reference. We're left with primarily a memory bandwidth change, and we have to question how much that actually matters. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, need to see if NVIDIA changed the die, but overall it's looking like another GTX 1060 from NVIDIA to try and keep things, I don't know, fresh or something. Or it's kind of, uh, it's like sprucing up a corpse at this point with some flowers. It's been out for a long time and going GDDR5X might not really do anything. AMD though, doesn't want to be outdone here. They want to show that they are also capable of re, 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 refreshing their Polaris line. And they've done that now silently by releasing an RX 580. The problem with this one, and this is a bigger problem than the 1060 with G5X. The problem, <laughs> because it's kind of an upgrade, problem with the G RX 580 is that the new one is the RX 580 2048. That number might sound like it's the same streaming processor count as the RX 570. The reason it sounds the same is because it is. It's the same. The RX 570 has 2048 FPUs as well. And the RX 580 has somewhere along the lines of 256 more of them. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an RX 5. 80 with fewer FPUs that equates the FPU count of an RX 570, ergo is an RX 570 named RX 580. I guess Halloween's coming up, maybe AMD figured they just dress up a 570 as a 580 and ship it. There are some changes though. So if you felt like this thing didn't need to exist, uh, you should know that it's going to be 40 megahertz faster. And uh, that's all I'm finding on this paper. That's that's the only change. So there's 40 megahertz increase in frequency, and the name is different. This looks like it's going to be a China region thing, so you probably won't see it pop up in Western markets. But if you do, just when you buy 580s from now on, be careful about the FPU count, especially if it's used or if you're buying from like Alibaba, AliExpress, or something like that. It might be a reduced core count product, and that would be unfortunate. Uh, it's also really weird timing because the RX 580 and Vega 56 are actually fairly competitive in pricing these days, now that the mining stuff has died down. So it's, it's unfortunate that Andy's doing this when those products should be getting kind of hot again for gamers. Uh, they're releasing one that could be very confusing, depending on who's buying it. The principal technology story is kind of is dead at this point. That, that story is, uh, is well reported on. We're back to the sprucing up a corpse thing that I said a moment ago, but AMD, responded with their own best practices for benchmarking Ryzen. They called it best practices, uh, went out to some media, we got a copy of it, and this uh, document primarily echoes the same complaints we had, so AMD's got the same issues here, of PT's testing. The only reason this is news is because it's coming from AMD this time, and AMD lists, among other things, questionable memory configurations, uncontrolled thermal testing, uh, questionable or unclear C states, and multi-core enhancement, or MCE, configurations and unaddressed motherboard settings. The company also released this information on the same day that Intel lifted its embargo for the 9000 series processors and likely not by accident. Let's get one of those slides up on the screen. So AMD also listed with the second version of the Intel performance report some more issues citing the following items. Unclear MCE settings on Z390, suspect memory configurations, unaddressed thermal environment disparities, unaddressed GPU assortment and performance deltas, unaddressed sample size collection and selection methodologies, and unaddressed Z370 C state configuration. And this is where we, uh, we pretty much agree with all these things. So that is specifically for the second version of the PT report, not the first one. Basically, again, same stuff we've been saying, but it's coming from AMD now, so that makes it a bit interesting. MSI has spoken a bit about US-China tariffs recently with the RTX 20 series. Chinese publication PC Online interviewed some representative at MSI and dug into topics like the US-China tariff war and RTX 20 series video cards. PC Online inquired as to whether recent tariffs will impact manufacturing costs for CPUs and GPUs in an adverse way. Liao Wei, Deputy General Manager of MSI Global Multimedia Business Unit, stated that he believed the prices for NVIDIA's RTX 20 series cards will remain consistent 
as the majority of the cards are constructed outside of China. Speaking to availability, Wei stated that shipments on RTX cards were tight, mostly due to production challenges. The Turing die is significantly larger and more complicated, and TSMC has reportedly had yield issues. Additionally, all of the RTX cards use well over 2,000 components to produce, compared to the GTX 1080 Ti 1600 components, according to this MSI representative. Silicon Lottery, the famed website known for binned chips and offering delitting services, released their history of binning success, dating back to Devil's Canyon. These statistics are especially illuminating if you are looking to overclock a CPU on the list, as it contains a voltage applied, instruction sets used during testing, and what percentage of chips are able to obtain a certain frequency. For instance, according to Silicon Lottery, only 4% of Intel's i7-8700Ks can hit 5.3 GHz, while 83% can achieve 5 GHz. Likewise, 98% of AMD's 1800X CPUs can hit 3.9 GHz, but that number shrinks to 18% at 4.1 GHz. There are a couple of caveats to the list. Intel Skylake X, KB Lake, and Coffee Lake CPUs were delitted, and many more CPUs were excluded from the list due to low sample size for testing. And we'll link that report in our show notes in the article in the description below if you want to read more about that. Backblaze up next. Backblaze is a, an online backup service. They regularly publish failure rates and failure data for the thousands of hard drives that they purchase, and they've released their newest quarterly report on hard drive failures with now 97,600 hard drives monitored, making up the full data in the report. According to Backblaze, data growth is expected to continue pretty much uninterrupted here, with most of that data being stored in the cloud, if we're going to call it that and use that word. The bulk of data is still expected to remain on spinning drives, especially for large archival data, and so either density must continue to increase or data centers have to be built out with something like 100,000 drives, for example. So three terabyte and six terabyte drives are being supplanted by 12 terabyte hard drives as manufacturers continue to up their densities. This is in Backblaze's report. And Backblaze also reports that the larger drives still have a very low AFR, annualized failure rate of 1.21%, while the overall failure rate for quarter three is 1.71%. This is the lowest ever achieved, or at least monitored by Backblaze in the reports. And the checkout rates for specific models and manufacturers, you can find the article, again, in our show notes below. And that's got information on individual drives. So if you're thinking of buying one, you're not really sure how reliable it is, we'll have data in the, uh, in the description linked below. Finally, hardware sales for this week. So again, SSDs are on crazy sales lately. Actually, it's not even a sale. It's actually just kind of the new price at this point. So we picked up 860 EVOs uh, and I think 850 EVOs for at 250 gigabytes for 50 to $60. And we'll link one of those below. The one terabyte drives are also cheaper now. MSI's RX 570 Armor 8 gigabyte card. At time of filming, it's about 160 bucks, which is pretty damn good, including free games. We'll see if that lasts. And if it doesn't, maybe you can buy the RX 580. That's actually an RX 570 instead, because apparently that's a thing now. So that's it for this one. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up our limited edition graph logo shirt. Thank you to all those who have so far. And go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to top of that directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.